business leaders who are actually fighting for change with what they do, which is definitely one of them. You know, we have a group of uh, people from Tibet. of New York, uh, one of the uh, parts of New York that suffered really quite uh, extreme flooding during Superstar Sandy, uh, a traditionally uh, like poor uh, section of New York that still has like tremendous populations of people of color, uh, and, and a lot of other people, a real vibrant place. Are you coming from Lower East Side? a large contingent of like, people, uh, communities affected, most directly impacted by uh, Superstorm Sandy, uh, the Rockaways, uh, and other areas you can see like, marked on their, marked on Finish. these flotation devices. Yeah, here, give us something to talk to. This is uh, peoplesclimate.tv. Talk to, talk to Kadeem. Hey, uh, Climate Brad with peoplesclimate.tv. We're live streaming right now. Uh, what's your name? Name. And where are you coming from? I'm from the Rockaways. And uh, uh, Queens. Queens. And wait, what's your Sandy story? Sandy story. Um, I didn't evacuate my house. Three feet of water. Um, luckily, I didn't have to leave. It was the second floor. But uh, we lost a lot of. I mean, a lot of what we had, a lot of memorabilia, a lot of our stuff. Uh, still paying back for rebuilding. We're still being, paying back for rebuilding. Uh, and like, why are you out here marching today? I'm out here marching today because I'm working in my community to improve the conditions that we live with. And, um, you know, something like this, a combination of, of people like this for, for an issue that we were directly affected by, 
It's a no-brainer. Yeah. Yeah. And is there a way for people who are watching you right now, like for them to get connected to like support, but like have that mutual way, like how can how can they get connected with you, what well, you're doing? To stay abreast of what yeah. we're doing. Org, and it'll, it'll keep you up to date as to the work that we're doing um, and to help provide resources and to just broaden our network as well. And uh, thank you so much, and we're just gonna keep doing this. All right, hey. thanks a lot. have a good one. Yeah, thank there. you. Wait. All right, now we're um, in the crowd. <laughs> we're gonna pull out back out to the side let people keep marching through. Lots of the faith community in New York is out here as well. We love you, God. We love you, God. You can see the Occupy Sandy centers, uh, a kind of outgrowth of Occupy Wall Street. I was one of the only uh, support for disaster relief uh, uh, contingents right in the way of, of the storm. And, you know, we're talking a storm that was hitting like during uh, the pre last presidential election when both presidential candidates were refusing to talk seriously about global warming, refusing to admit that climate change is happening here and now. Uh, and it really, especially you're talking about uh, Mitt Romney, his position on disaster relief was that FEMA should be privatized and that global warming should be made is a joke. And it's not. So that's why these people are out here today. And let's see if we can find some more people to talk to. This is uh, peoplesclimate.tv. Uh, I'm Brad. Uh, we're live streaming. Do you uh, say why you're out here? Where, what's your name and why you're out here today? Uh, my name is Virginia. I'm here spreading the flag to mobilize. Political action and a social movement strategy to get whole communities involved and put pressure on political leaders. So and is this your family here? Yes, it is. These are my son's family and my daughter's is that, is that part of your motivation for being yes, out here? Yes, definitely. A safe future for everybody. Yeah, what's the future that you want for what's the future that you want for yourself and for your children? A planet that's safe and healthy and supportive of life. And so are they, it's uh, climate mobilization. And how yes. can people find out more about it? They can go to our website, climatemobilization.org. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. So I read this. Climate mobilization is a pledge to mobilize, and you can see there, it's like one of these uh, grassroots efforts to really create political change in this country by hook or by crook. Here we are, this is Volpo New York. Hey, you want to talk about Occupy? Uh, do I want to talk about Occupy Sandy? Um, I don't know, it's been a while. Are you wearing an Occupy Sandy patch? You want to just talk? Where are you going? coming from? Uh, Staten Island. And uh, like, what's Staten Island's connection to all of this? Uh, we were ravaged by uh, Hurricane Sandy. Is it um, is the effects over? I mean, like, is I everything can, uh, back to normal? Everything is obviously not back to normal. Um, there, you know, there are different people in different stages of recovery. Some people are back um, and awaiting for. Uh, Another catastrophe that's going to be uh, the flood insurance rise. Um, you know, so there was a the economic catastrophe that led to Occupy Wall Street uh, involving the sub, uh, subprime mortgages. That hit Staten Island really bad. Before that, Staten Island was an environmental showcase community. They were dumped on. They had a landfill. They were they had a, two Manhattan site project sites. Um, you know, so we got we had a, a serious environmental damage back then. Um, uh, environmental uh, and economic crisis in 2008 to 2011 in Occupy Wall Street. Um, we leveraged that network to come out and do recovery work. Um, so you had the economic crisis, then you had like this physical climate pollution crisis, and so and now what? And then Sandy came, which was you know uh, an effect of climate crisis, right? right. It was um, the, the melting ice cap, the acidification of the ocean waters, um, were a big contribution to the tidal surge, right? Um, and so like that, need, I'm here. Um, 
because I live in Midland Beach. I live in that area. Um, I'm, you know, and, what, and what I'm so I, 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 I was part of Occupy Sandy, uh, which uh, ran the central coordination hub for uh, disaster relief in Staten Island. And what's your message for, like, David Koch, who lives across the way here, and all the other, like, the, the, the people who are right now living in New York and profiting from, like, the fossil fuel economy? I mean, the message is uh, either A, grow a heart and, and like, and, and do some, like, give your money to switching over to uh, clean energy. Yeah, uh, sorry. Give a good portion of it. Um, a, second, um, pay your fucking taxes. Uh, third, stop fucking with the, with the uh, you know, the half-assed democratic institution we have. Um, and fourth, if you don't do any of that, people are going to come for you. All right. Well, that's a pretty good message to end on. It's a, it's a leader from Gold Bowl. Why now? Right. Leader from Gold Bowl. Oh, yeah. 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 somebody who'd want to talk on camera. We're stream live Hi, streaming right this now. This is uh, Brad Johnson. We're li live streaming with peoplesclimate.tv powered by Octag TV. I see River Lennox Yearwood over there. Um, can you tell us uh, your name, the organization, and why you're here? And why this why this crowd is here? Yeah. Uh, so my name's Jeremy. I'm with Vocal New York. Uh, I mean, Vocal's here for sort of two reasons. The big one is to send a message that, you know, low-income people, people of color, care about the climate. Right, Vocal New York is comprised of local people living with AIDS, active former drug users trying to end the drug war, uh, and people with a history of incarceration trying to end mass incarceration. But we care more than just about ending AIDS, ending the drug war, and ending mass incarceration. We also want to send a message that we care about saving the planet, right? And people with AIDS know best what it's like to be in a life and death fight. We fought that fight for years, we continue to fight it, and now we're joining the, the the time of life. For us, we want to call for investment in rebuilding our infrastructure to be resilient, and we want to train and employ people who have been excluded from the workforce to do that work. We think there's a way to combat climate change and combat inequality at the same time. And what's the, like, the rest of the age was that you had a government that you had leadership that did not want to pay attention when people were dying. They didn't want to hear that and they wanted like blame the people, blame the victims, uh, and I I feel like that's what we're seeing today here with um, the climate crisis. How how do you how what does it take to get people's voice to be heard and not just to like hear but to actually create change? Right. Well, I think I mean I think it could start with massive marches like like this, and then we actually have to start drilling down into drilling down as a probably bad bad use of the metaphor right but to really launch real meaningful campaigns that are gonna you know win meaningful improvements so here in New York just talking concretely so we're one of I think the only city in New York in the United States where the the majority of our uh, carbon footprint is created by our buildings by our big buildings right as opposed to LA where it would be cars so in LA where uh, probably the biggest step they could take would be you know calling for all the cars to be electric. Here in New York, it really is about us uh, retrofitting or upgrading, right, all of our buildings to be uh, to be resilient, right? So putting in new boilers, putting in, uh, uh, going through and, and literally upgrading it to have the, the lowest carbon footprint, and then start looking at how we put solar panels on and use alternative forms of energy, right? So right there, what could we do? Uh, the city could invest money to retrofit all buildings in New York City and invest money in training and employment programs to hire to train and hire people from low income communities, from communities who've been excluded to do that work. And, and do it through unions, right? Because we want to make sure that any uh, jobs created are union jobs. They're they're not jobs. I should use the word career, right? They're they're real careers. And we know that labor unions create careers for people. They move people from poverty to working class to middle class. And that's what we have the opportunity to do: combat climate change and uh, make our city a model for, for uh, the world. Thank you so much. All right.
Brad Johnson with the People's Climate March. You're watching live on peoplesclimate.tv. We're uh, entering again uh, Columbus Circle. It's just screaming, and like we're literally, I mean, we have stayed basically at the front of the march the whole time, and we're talking already thousands of people. If you look up and you kind of scale, view up, like pull it up, you can just see it goes and goes and goes and goes. Yeah, yeah, just to log in. All right, we're going to take a short break.